Welcome to chapter 2.7, where we're going to cover the nucleus. Uh, so the nucleus is going to be found only in eukaryotic cells. You will not find this in prokaryotic by definition. And it's going to be one of the more important, the more protected, the more unique organelles that we're going to see inside of a eukaryotic cell because it's trying to protect the DNA. And if you screw up your DNA, you pretty much screw up the entire cell. Uh, there's a good chance you're just going to die. And so our cells will go to pretty extreme lengths to have this selected region that's kind of protected, that, that's uh, kept a, a, a separate, I guess you could say, from the rest of the cytoplasm. Uh, and so when you look at an actual nucleus, you'll see it's pretty well walled off. It's very well regulated to make sure that random things can't get in there and just mess with your DNA. Because if they can, and there are certain substances that can do this, uh, certain heavy metals, certain medicines can do things like this, and that's part of how they can do damage. That's part of why some things are dangerous or carcinogens, where they can lead to cancer. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're very careful with this. So if you look at a nucleus and you kind of start from the outside in, right away you see that there's kind of security. Because you don't just have one phospholipid bilayer membrane, you have two. So we call this the nuclear envelope. You can see that up at the top here. And the nuclear envelope will consist of an outer and inner membrane. So each of these will be its own full membrane. Each of these is its own phospholipid bilayer with its own proteins and everything else mixed in. And because you have a double membrane and it's harder to get things in and out, we'll also have these pores, these kind of openings, these gaps, these doorways that will allow things that need to get into and out of the, the nucleus to get in and out of the nucleus. So there are still ways to get in and out, but we can just regulate these pores. And beyond there, we make sure that double membrane really prevents anything from sneaking in. So that's the nuclear envelope. Once you get inside, you've got the nucleoplasm, which is going to be very similar to what's outside, which is going to be the cytoplasm, but chemically it is different. So it's similar, but it is not the same. That's one of the reasons we don't include the nucleus as part of the cytoplasm. It's chemically going to be a bit different. Now you'll also see this structure that oftentimes appears solid. So if you see a nucleus, sometimes it looks like there's like little dots in it. Uh, sometimes there's one, sometimes there can be several. But this will be a nucleolus or plural would be nucleoli. And this thing's job is going to be to help produce ribosomes. So when we talk about these ribosomes, you can see some of them on the outside here because some ribosomes are floating around the nucleus and some can even be attached to the nuclear envelope. Uh, but the idea here is these ribosomes are going to be produced inside the nucleus in like smaller subunits. You kind of assemble them outside. Uh, and then these ribosomes are able to leave via these nuclear pores to get into the cytoplasm where they do their job. Uh, we're going to also have DNA. So you can see here, there's the arrows to all the DNA that's kind of in this nucleoplasm. And this DNA is going to be typically present as chromatin. And so chromatin is just going to be a loose mixture of DNA and proteins that you'll find. And this is what a normal cell contains. Now, the DNA is going to contain genes which are just those units that do something. Now, typically that means make a protein or make an RNA. And so this protein or RNA can then do its job, and so you get some type of characteristic from it, usually. And the idea of using a gene to make a protein to do its task is going to be called expression. And I only bring this up because you have many genes, but they're not all on. So if we express something, that would be when it's on. But we can also repress something. And if you repress something, that's just where you turn the gene off. So just because you have a gene, for instance, for skin pigment, which even pasty me has, uh, there are skin pigmentation genes there. But for the most part, they're off. And I don't have ones that really trigger a large amount of protein production. But if you put me in the sunlight for long periods of time, after I burn a couple times and maybe peel off some skin, I will start to tan extra because it will turn on and express some of these pigment genes, which makes me produce the melanin that's in the skin that makes it darker. And then that darker pigment will actually allow for it to absorb more UV light because UV can actually mess with your DNA and cause it to mutate, which can lead to cancer. So that's the idea of sunblock and sunscreen is you're trying to prevent skin cancer by blocking that UV because no matter how dark your skin is, there's still always going to be some exposure to UV light if you're outside a lot, and it can lead to skin cancer. So the genes are on the DNA. The DNA is ultimately what chromatin is composed of, along with some proteins for structure. Uh, and the genes themselves can be turned on or off. 
And then outside, you can see the ribosomes it's just pointing to, but that's pretty much a wrap up of what we have with the nucleus. Now I want to real quick just go through a couple things in a little bit more detail. So chromatin, I want you to realize, is going to be DNA plus proteins, but it's going to be in a format that's loose. So this is like your house where all your stuff is just sitting out on bookshelves. Uh, it's sitting, you know, if it's like clothes, probably in a pile on your floor. Whereas chromosomes is going to be very similar. It's still DNA and proteins. That hasn't changed. Uh, it's still the same guys, actually. But we've just condensed or compacted them. So this is just going to be a different format. So it's kind of like I can have rope sitting in a pile on the ground. But then I could take that rope and wrap it around something so I could have a piece of wood. And by wrapping it around there, I organize it, I compact it. And so it makes it much more maneuverable. It's easier to go through and move it from one place to the other and keep track of it. And so we're going to produce chromosomes, or I should say make chromosomes, whatever you want to think of it. It's just chromatin that's wound. So we're not making it from scratch. We're making it from chromatin. But we're only going to do this when we're going through cell division. Because it's during cell division that we're trying to divide our stuff up and make sure that it gets to where it's supposed to be. So much like you pack your stuff up when you're moving from one house to the next, that's what we do with chromosomes. But for everyday life, a cell does not want to be like that. You don't want to live out of boxes because when it's packaged up, you can't access it. You know, if all your stuff is in boxes, you, you can't just go grab it and put it on. You have to unpack it first. And so that's why you'll see that cells will pretty much always favor chromatin. Chromosomes is only used for movement when you need stuff to be highly organized, highly compacted. The nucleolus I want to bring up because ribosomes, which we've mentioned before, we'll mention later as well, are going to be made from something called rRNA, that's ribosomal RNA, plus some proteins. And so these guys will be kind of assembled and stuck together, at least in these smaller chunks called subunits, at the nucleolus before they leave. And so that's what we're going to get to give us a ribosome, which can then be present outside in the cytoplasm. You can see them kind of all over the place. And these guys will make proteins. And then we've got the nuclear pores, which is just how we've talked about things get in and out. So when we've got pieces of RNA which are produced, uh, so like when you want to go through an, an activated gene to express it, you'll produce something called mRNA, messenger RNA, and that will leave via these pores to go into the actual cytoplasm. The ribosomes will go through this process of leaving so they can go into the cytoplasm. And then I do want to bring up this structure here. This is called the endoplasmic reticulum. You can see it's connected to the nucleus. I want you guys to realize that the nucleus, while it is very protected, is still connected to other stuff, specifically the endoplasmic reticulum. So stuff is able to kind of move between the two. So especially as you export stuff from the nucleus, it can go into the ER where it can be processed, transferred, and additional reactions can occur. So don't think the nucleus is like this complete island in the cell. It does have connections to other organelles, and the ER will ultimately connect by one means or another to even other organelles. So there is a lot of organization and pathways in our cells. And at the bottom here, this is just a pictorial representation of the difference between chromatin and chromosomes. You can see the DNA wraps around proteins. This is what this is showing us, proteins with DNA wrapped around. Then the proteins kind of bind together, they stick together to condense things. So we then get this fiber that's composed of this condensed protein and DNA that's wrapped around the proteins. And then these fibers will actually start to go back and forth. You know, they kind of form these loops. And so that will condense things further. And then those loops can actually go through and form loops. So we've got these long strands of looped fibers. And then those can start to go loop again. And that's ultimately how we get to a chromosome. And chromosomes are kind of cool because if we stain a cell, chromosomes stain really darkly. So even with a light microscope, you can look at these stained chromosomal structures so long as the cell's in cell division, so that they're there, uh, and you can actually see it. Whereas with chromatin, even if you stain it, you're not going to see like the actual DNA. You might see some darker stuff where you can tell the nucleus is there. So you might see like a dark speck that's the nucleolus with like some other just kind of fuzzy, darker stuff around it that would be the nucleus. But if you really want to see clearly the DNA and the individual pieces of DNA, because each chromosome is a linear piece, uh, unless you're bacteria and it's one circular piece, but each of those pieces can be seen distinctly even with a light microscope, even at not that high of power, you know, 100x, etc. so long as you stain it when the chromosomes are there. So it's kind of a cool thing. Hope you guys enjoy the nucleus, and I'll see you guys soon.